I couldn't resist making this video. Today, the NFL and video game developer 2K revealed they will be returning to the football video game market with the aptly, if not unoriginally named, NFL 2K series. I know as sports gamers, we're pretty much dead to any announcements in sports gaming, but this could actually be the innovation we've been begging for. We don't know anything about the games right now, other than the first release is slated for 2021. But when has that ever stopped us before? So today, we'll be taking a look at all the features we could want in the seemingly unthinkable second NFL video game published next year. Got your own? Let us know in the comments down below. Let's have some fun. Before we get into some of the specifics, let's start with the general gameplay we'd like to see. So the one thing we know is it's a, it's a quote, non-simulation game. Well, what the hell does that mean? Well, as of now, it could mean anything. But let's talk about the ideal definition of that very vague term. So to me, simulation means what we get from Madden, or at least what they try to deliver from Madden. But it means gameplay as close to real football as you can get. I'm a sports nerd, okay? I love the real football experience as much as anyone. But as gamers, there's as big, if not bigger, a market for the crazier, more insane aspects of the sports we love watching. So non-simulation could mean two things. It could mean a more arcade style, think Tecmo Bowl or Madden 2000 in the upright arcade machines, or it could mean old NFL street style gameplay. But hear me out, what if it means both? We're working with a blank slate here after all, so what if you could have your cake and eat it too? I've been playing a lot of NFL Street lately, and I love the main mode of playing through challenges against different teams, culminating with crazy games against teams of all-stars and legends. Just revamp that, add some extra gameplay mechanics, maybe even some video packages with actual Street players or NFL players, and you've got yourself a front cover mode. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. When it comes to Street, what we love about the gameplay is how fast and fluid it was. Pitch the ball at any time, pull out crazy jumping spin moves, dribble the ball around the last man, insane dribble reverse option flea flickers. If you can imagine it, street gameplay let you do it, and that's what we're looking for. Now, can street gameplay alone sell a title? Possibly, but we're building our dream game here, and assuming the game will be sold for $60, I need more bang for my buck than a reskin of NFL Street from 13 years ago. And this is where the more traditional arcade gameplay comes in. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean the fullest realization of what EA Ultimate Team modes were supposed to be. When Ultimate Team was first announced for FIFA, and we saw the presentation, we envisioned a simpler style of gameplay, less tied to numbers defining every individual trait of every individual player. A mode with more freedom and unpredictability. Of course, all we got was a bloated trading card microtransaction factory with gameplay that's basically the same as the normal game, but now we have the chance to make things right. And the realization of what we all envisioned from Ultimate Team is high on my priority list. Remember, this new game is non-simulation, so we don't need 500 different attributes defining the exact flexibility of every individual muscle of each player. Give me six numbers, speed, strength, mentality, and then three numbers relating to each position. So from a gameplay perspective, the game isn't simulating itself, literally a non-simulation game. Things are happening in real time. Instead of 17 numbers deciding an aerial battle between DK Metcalf and Richard Sherman, we just get a random interaction. I'm not a game developer, I don't know the specifics of how to give a more random feel to interactions between NPCs or between players. But when you play games like Metal Gear Solid 5, Alien Isolation, or any of the Civ games, where the AI acts with much more randomness than we've seen in a sports game in years. Let me feel like I, as the player, have more control over actions on the field, which is a real issue, in FIFA in particular. If I play 10 games between Seahawks and the 49ers, I want everyone to turn out differently. Okay, that's enough talk about the gameplay. Of course, the gameplay means nothing without modes that actually make us care about the game we're playing. Now, I mentioned an NFL Street-type mode, but I never actually talked about how to utilize the arcade-style gameplay I just spent a couple minutes clumsily explaining. In simple terms, franchise mode. Of course, that sounds like it flies directly in the face of that whole non-simulation thing we keep bringing up, but give me a second to explain. From a simulation perspective, what we get in Madden is an accurate, albeit incredibly basic, depiction 
of an owner slash GM slash coach. But we're missing the crazy stuff that EA just simply can't do with the simulation franchise. With those restrictions removed, give me the absolutely insane experience I've always wanted. Let me create my team like we used to do in Madden 08, where I literally created a new league with their team creator options. Let me relocate my team to Brisbane, Australia if I want to, and let the computer do the same. Give me press conferences and let me cuss out reporters. Let me change the rules, kind of like NBA 2K, where owners can vote on rule changes, but go further with it. Let me turn off illegal formation penalties, change the draft, institute a fantasy draft 10 years in, add another league. I'm, uh, look, I'm going absolutely nuts here, but bigger is better. I've always resented the idea that sports games should restrict what we can do, especially non-sim games like this one. If I want to go crazy, let me go crazy. I'm a big boy. I can decide if I want to break the game or not. Let me create my own plays again. Let me edit players in the middle of a save so when I lose the Super Bowl, I can relocate to Alabama and change my entire roster to the Alabama football team. For that matter, let me recreate the entire college football system if I want to. Let me make the entire season one giant single elimination tournament. I could go on for years here. I'm, I'm just trying to give you a sense of how limitless the possibilities are so that we can all be disappointed when we get Madden but without real players come 2021. But now let's get into some of the nitty gritty and let's start with a pie in the sky if we lived in a perfect world type of pitch. No EA like behavior. Now this means two things a non-yearly release schedule, and no microtransactions. Now, I don't say this just from a perfect world perspective. There may actually be a business decision to do this. If you're 2K, you have an opportunity we haven't seen in sports games in almost a decade. You pick off the biggest sport in America and have the chance to make a new series with it. You have the rarest of chances in video games, a true first impression. You have the opportunity to buy the everlasting affection of all the football fans, yes, our standards are laughably low. But should you break with tradition, stop with the yearly release, and don't make me pay to get the Super Ultra Pearl Legend All Madden NFL 100 Peyton Manning Ultimate Team card, you've just become the hero us sports games fans have been praying for. Hell, charge me 10 bucks every year for a roster update, I don't give a damn, I'll pay that. Then when I pay my full $60 every three or four years, I get an entirely new game that's actually worth my money. I haven't paid full price for a Madden game in 12 years, but if you give me a truly new game every couple years, you can have all of my money. It's actually kind of sad how desperate we are. But uh, let, let's get into some quick hits for on-field features we'd like to see. Or maybe just me, I don't know you. Maybe you like Madden. Seek help if you do. A first person view. This would be absolute madness and would probably induce more vomiting than a rickety roller coaster. But how cool would it be to truly see the field from a quarterback's perspective? The return of the vision cone. I may be the only person ever that actually liked the late 2000s Madden vision cone, but I liked the tactics that went along with it. You could really play like Peyton Manning, immediately setting your vision cone and throwing the ball in two and a half seconds. It forced you to plan ahead, and it really rewarded you if you took the time to get good at it. Or turn it off and don't worry about it, whatever you like. Options are options. More play designs. Look, this isn't so much a shot in the dark pitch, it's just a basic thing I can't believe we don't have yet. But with the, pre with the prevalence of run pass options in the NFL and crazy design normal options in college, we haven't seen that reflected in our video games yet. Give me all those insane plays to choose from, and again, if I don't want it, I'll just use the West Coast playbook like a coward. More defensive position options. This is one I know angers the super football nerds. Madden continues to use the outdated and antiquated right end, left end, right outside linebacker, left outside linebacker model, and it actually does affect players when I switch between my base defensive sets. Take those away, give me nose tackles, defensive tackles, and edge rushers. With the more fluid rating system that I described earlier, that's basically what they'd have to do anyway. A massive creation suite. It's actually something 2K have already done in their wrestling series. Yes, there's all kinds of issues with that, and I'd like to avoid even mentioning it with the potential breadth of fresh air that is NFL 2K, but 
credit where credit's due. The creation options in the WWE 2K series are absolutely stupid, as you'll soon find out in a special series I've been planning for a while. You can create an entirely new roster, entirely new companies with new championships and arenas with all kinds of weird and ridiculous options. Give us the same freedom here. People with far more talent than me can create the most incredible things when given these tools. It's like letting other people develop your game for you. Let us create the Canadian Football League, the Australian Rules Football League, the FBS, the California JUCO Circuit, Texas 2A State Football, or even the XFL. Speaking of which, XFL integration. We're back to a probably never gonna happen pitch here, but let's have fun. This suggestion comes straight from a buddy of mine who's a big football manager fan. If you've never played the world-class soccer sim, you have a choice of thousands of leagues to include in your save. But not all these leagues have to be simulated to the degree that, say, the Premier League does. If you want to use the players currently playing in the Canadian 3rd Division, the game will sim those results as if they happen, but it doesn't grind the game to a halt, simulating thousands of games a day. You can do the same with the XFL, letting us pick players from XFL rosters that we see are doing well. You don't have to have the logos, the league structure, or anything, just the rights to the team names and the players. Now, ideally, I'd like for the XFL to get its own game where they can do all this stuff I'm describing anyway, but for now, give us something new here. Streamlined controls. This has been a serious issue for a decade in football games. What made late 2000s Madden's NFL Street and NCAA football great, among other things, was the controls. They were responsive, runners did what you wanted, receiver controls were snappy, QB controls were extremely fluid, and defender controls were fast as hell. Newer Maddens feel slow, runners don't respond, running backs will stop just randomly when you try to hit the hole. The game punishes you for controlling receivers. I'm not a developer, I don't know how all these things work from a coding perspective. I just know what's been done before, and I'd give my right nut to see it done again. Online play people actually want. As you can tell, I'm not an online player myself. You actually need friends for that. But there's no denying online is such a big part of gaming today, you need to have some kind of offering. But there's no reason it has to stand in the way of a good single player offering. And you have the opportunity to work from the ground up so they can make online whatever they want it to be. Maybe an NBA 2K style my park, online franchise, player lobbies, online street mode, I mean, the possibilities here are endless, even for someone like me who needs to pay for people to play these modes with me. And so there we have it. What started out as an actually organized video has developed into me just spouting out whatever random crap has entered into my mind, but there really is a world of possibilities with a new game like this. Is any of this gonna happen? Probably not. Being a sports game fan for 20 years makes you a total cynic, unfortunately. But it's fun to speculate, and maybe, just maybe, somebody out there will see what we've all been saying this whole time and genuinely try to make the game we've all been wanting. Anything I missed? Anything you want to see? Let me know in the comments. Let's discuss and play Fantasy Game Maker. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to GA Sports for all our content now and in the future. We appreciate you.